Shalom to the Mishpacha of Yahweh. Shalom, shalom, shabbat, shalom. Welcome to the Yahweh and Yeshua Speak TV show. We're broadcasting from Evanston, Illinois. This is the Hebrew Husband and Wife Ministry. The lesson that we are going to discuss today is entitled Juneteenth. Another reason to shut the door to random strangers speaking into our lives. Let's go to Proverbs 4th chapter. Juneteenth. Another reason to shut the door to random strangers speaking into our lives. Let's go to Proverbs 4th chapter. So the Bible told us to shut the door to random strangers speaking into our lives. In other words, people saying things that are not in the Bible and thinking that we should be concerned about doing those things. Teach it tell like it, bro. Believing those tell things. Tell like the daddy told you to. Going to Proverbs, fourth chapter. Hallelujah. And we're going to read Hallelujah. verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 reads Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. So the, the scripture says uh, Shemar thy lay with all diligence guard it for out of it your mind, your spirit what you let in. The expression is garbage in, garbage out. So it says, guard your mind, guard your spirit, yeah, yeah. guard your heart. Yes. Says, For out of it are the issues of Kai. That's where your belief system comes from, yeah. what you put into yourself. And so let's look at this where, where it says, um, keep, keep your mind, keep your heart. Uh -huh. And let's see what is that in the Hebrew. What does that that word, uh, that English word keep mean in the Hebrew? Let's read it, sis. The English word keep is a is the primitive Hebrew root word masam, found as Strong's Exalted Concordance of the Old and New Testaments, number 5341. Strong's defines keep as to guard in a good sense, to protect, maintain, obey, or a bad one to conceal. It means besiege, hidden thing, keep, keeping, keeping, monument, observe, preserve, preserver, suburb, watcher, watching. All right, so this, this uh, English word uh, keep, or the, the Hebrew word shamar, for the, which the English word keep came from, it says to, to guard in a good sense, to protect what goes into you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't just let anything so come in your eye gate and your ear right. gate. Right. It says to to preserve and to watch over. Yeah. And to maintain and to be a watchman of what you let come into you. So much. Whether it's what you the programs you watch or what you listen to uh -huh. or the conversations that you hear. I know, right? Go to Genesis the ninth chapter. So the Bible tells us, us that this is the time of the Gentiles, uh -huh. meaning it is the Japhethite or Caucasian time yeah, yeah. to Teach control right here, Jerusalem bro. and rule the world. All right. And Jerusalem or Israel is the center of the world. And so it's now their time to control Jerusalem and rule the world. The Japhethite or Caucasian. Genesis 9 chapter. Yes. Yeah. And we want to read verse 27. Praise on. Genesis chapter 9. And verse 27 oh, yeah. reads. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 27. Elohim shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So now here are, are the, the three racial or ethnic groups right here of which the whole world consists. I like it, Israel. Right. So is know. doing its best to try to mix it up to where it <laughs> won't be, but it will never be able to change it. 
Babylon will never be able to change it totally and mix up these three ethnic groups. No, 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 no. It says, Elohim shall enlarge Yaphet. So let's talk about the Caucasians. All right. He shall dwell in the tents of Shem. Uh -huh. Well, that's talking about us who were, who are descendants of the slaves that were brought over uh, to the Western Hemisphere All right. to be in slavery. And it says, and uh, Canaan shall be his abbot or servant. So that's talking about what people call our Africans now. Yeah, yeah. Our Hamites over there on the, the continent of, of Africa. So the, the Japhetic people settled in India and Europe after the flood. And so since I'm going to help you and I'm going to read this um, part. So this is talking about the Japhethites or the Caucasians. So they settled in India and Europe after the flood. It says, early history shows the Japhethites split into two groups. One group settled in the region of present-day India and Central Asia, and the other group in the European continent. Both the divisions traced their ancestry back to Japheth. The early Aryans knew him as the Japhetiska, or chief of the race. The Greeks referred to Japheth as Iapetos or Japetos. East Indians called him Japeti or pra, pra Japati. Romans used Jupiter or Jupiter. The Saxons perpetuated his name as Lapheth, subsequently transliterated as Sheaf, and recorded his name in their early genealogies as the son of Noah, the forebear of their various peoples. The variant Seskef was used by early Scandinavians. All of these peoples, we must remember, were pagans whose knowledge or even awareness of the book of Genesis had been lost and was non-existent. Let's go to Romans 11th chapter. 11th chapter. So the Japhethites are also called Caucasoids, Indo-Europeans, huh. Indo-Germanics, and Indo-Aryans. Huh. Welcome to Romans the 11th chapter. Great. Got a yard for Revelation knowledge. Hallelujah. Romans the 11th chapter. And you want to read verses 25 to 26. Hallelujah. Romans chapter Hallelujah. 11. And verses 25 to 26. Read. Romans chapter 11, verse 25. For well, I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become. Uh, All right, Baruch uh, It says, for I would not awk, this is the, the uh, uh, Abba, our, our Father in heaven talking to us, Abba in heaven, it says, I would not awk that you should be ignorant of this mystery. So this is a mystery. This is something that most people yep, don't yep, know. Yep, yep. Tell that is, right? Lest you should be wise in your own. I uh, know, right? Lest you should be cockham in your own conceit. I uh, know, right? Or you have this theory about what's actually going on, or who people right. are, or, or what uh, exactly is history. I uh, know, right? Or what exactly is the way things should be, the truth of things. Uh -huh. It says that blindness in its part is happened to Israel. Oh, yeah. And now Israel, the people that are called Israel in the Bible, are actually the people that were brought over here to the Western Hemisphere in the transatlantic slave trade. Tell like this, Ross, so we can know. It says until the fullness know, of right? Hagoi or the Gentiles, yeah, yeah. the Japhethites, the Caucasians, be come in. Right. So this is the time for the Gentiles to rule, yeah. the Japhethites or the Caucasians to rule. Yeah. And it says the people that are Israel, the Israel that the Bible talks about, will not know as a whole that they are Israel right, right. until it's time for the Gentiles to stop ruling and reigning. Right. And that will coincide with 
the Savior's second coming. Tell it like it is, Ron. But so he said you know. he doesn't want you and I that have come to salvation to be ignorant of this mystery. Right, right. And and not be wise or, or be operating in your own I theories know, right? or in your own limited imagination tell, tell of, like of is, what right? you have let come into your eye gates and ear gates. Right, right. Tell, tell like your daddy he said, said. But blindness in part has happened to Israel yep. until the Gentile rulership is over. Right. That's that fullness become in. All right. right. Verse 26. Verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away up Belialus from Yahoo. All right, so the scripture says, And so all Israel shall be Yeshua or saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, talking about the Yeshua's second yeah, yeah. coming, yeah. and turn away Ra from right. Yaakov. Right, right. So this Ra, that, that part of the Ra that he's talking about, is these uh, Gentile stranger ways and days that Israel has been told to celebrate. Right. The former slaves that were brought over to the Western Hemisphere to be in slavery. Tell like it is, Ra. So the Gentiles or the Japhethites or the Caucasoids are currently in the Roman Empire rulership phase. Uh -huh. That's the last phase yeah, yeah. of the Caucasian world ruling empire. Right, right. Now we are descendants of former slaves. And we found out that the Gentiles the, the Bible also calls them strangers, quote unquote, profiled us huh. in slavery. Right. And so let's see how they, they did this profiling okay. in slavery. And we're going to read just a little bit of the Willie Lynch letter. Okay. So this is a Willie Lynch letter. And as time is progressing, there are some people that are stepping up and trying to put out a lie that certain things never happened, uh -huh. certain things were not true. Uh -huh. And I was actually searching for the Willie Lynch letter. I have it on the computer somewhere, but I couldn't find it. And then, as, as I say, oh, well, I'm sure it's on the, the, the computer, you know, on the, the www. And when I went, I actually saw something to where, well, people say that this, there was a, a someone named Willie Lynch, and he actually wrote this letter, but actually that's not true. Uh -huh. So there, uh -huh. gotcha. again, uh, the lies are trying to run so fast, but the lie right. can never overtake the truth. All right. But so now here's the Willie Lynch letter to show how the, the uh, Gentiles are strangers profiled our forefathers in slavery. All right, so let's let's read a little bit of uh, this, yeah. these profiling. The seven profile steps. Uh -huh. In my bag here, I have a full method for controlling your black slaves. Strategy one, taking so many drops of good white blood and putting them into as many black women as possible, uh -huh. varying the drops by the various tones that you want, and then letting them breed with each other until the circle of colors appears as you desire. St strategy two, the more a foreigner knows about the language of another country, the more he is able to move to all levels of that society. For example, you take a slave, if you teach him all about your language, he will know all your secrets, and he is then no more a slave, for you can't fool him any longer. And being a fool is one of the basic ingredients of an incident to the maintenance of the slavery system. Strategy three, I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves, and I take these differences and make them bigger, north, south, east, west side. Strategy four, Break the spirit of the man much like you would break the spirit of a horse and ride the woman as though she were a wild ass until she is tamed and offer no resistance. St 
Strategy 5. Bull with the black man in front of the woman and child until he gives up his will to resist. This leaves the woman feeling alone, unprotected by him, with his image destroyed. Strategy 6. We talked about paying particular attention to the female and her offspring for orderly future planning. Then, more recently, we stated that by reversing the position of the male and female, we have created an orbiting cycle that turns on its own axis forever, unless a phenomenon occurred and reshifted the position of the male and female. Strategy 7. The best way to deal with the phenomenon is to shave their mental history and create a multiplicity of phenomena of illusions so that each illusion will twirl in its own orbit, something similar to floating balls in a vacuum. All right, so this is the profiling that was done to our forefathers in slavery. Uh -huh. And this, the, within the Willie Lynch letter, what it was was created all these different illusions and put the woman on top, put yeah, the man yeah. underneath. Yeah. It says, you know, whoop the man until with an inch of his life or kill him in uh -huh. front of the, 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 the woman and the child to make them be afraid. And it says, the best way to deal with this this profile is to to shave their mental history. Right, right. In other words, work with their mind. Right. And create a multiplicity of illusions. Yeah, I know, right. And so that this profiling dictated who the slaves were, how they thought, what they wanted, what they would do what they would buy when it got to the point after slavery was over. Now they're selling them cars, cell phones, they're selling them hmm. uh, uh, athletic shoes. Kind of like it is, Rob. Profiling day. how we dress, Modern day, what we slave. eat, and profiling is also suspecting or targeting a person on the basis of the published characteristics that the Gentile stranger society says they have, oh, yeah. or the behaviors are. that the Gentile society has attached to the slaves, the former slaves, and us, their descendants. Okay. And when these characteristics are seen, then the, the Gentile society has published how you're supposed to interpret that. Right. So, like is, so we descendants know. of former slaves still encounter these slavery mindsets yeah, yeah, yeah. or this slavery profiling and it's also called prejudices. Hallelujah. Let's go to Proverbs the 22nd chapter. So when my grand nephew was living with his mom and uh, my sister, his grandmother in Naperville, he was about three years old and he was in the yard playing and he threw something, you know, three-year-old. And uh, whatever it was, there was this uh, uh, Caucasian man that came up, you know, in the yard. And then um, my, my, my sister was out there. And uh, she says, oh, uh, you know, I really apologize. And she says, um, you know, called, the, you know, my, my grandnephew's name and said, please apologize to the man and tell him you didn't mean to do that. So then he apologized. He's three years old now. And this Caucasian going to come over to him and start da 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 huh. and, and my sister stepped in between and said, get out of my yard and get out of here now. Right. But that, that's just part of that profile. Y'all yeah, yeah, right, y'all yeah, yeah, right. And, and then out. he was um, running late uh, for school. He was in Park Ridge uh, at 15. And uh, he got up and then it's like, oh, shucks, because his mom was at work. And so then he's running, trying to, you know, catch the bus and get to school on time. Well, the Park Ridge police huh. profile him. Right. And then they, they go and they stop him. All right, so who are you? Where are you going? What are you doing? Right. Why? Because this, this, this Gentile stranger society right, right. has programmed, okay, you see a, a, a yep. black, you know, and he's running. Okay. Right. Oh, he must have snatched somebody's purse. Right. 
But again, like it is, this is just an, an awareness of the profile. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so he, he explained it, and they realized, oh, okay, this is just a, a young, you know, man. Right. He's running late for school. But if it had been a Caucasian at 15 running uh, school, no, right. he would not have been stopped. Proverbs 22nd chapter. And Please, if you want to read verse 6. Proverbs right? 22nd chapter. Hallelujah. And verse 6. Read. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from him. Right. All right. So it says, train up a zakar in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So, so slavery was a life-changing experience to our families yeah. who were part of it. Yeah. Our parents all gave us the quote-unquote talk. Uh -huh. So there's a talk that happened in the descendants of, of former slaves' yeah, yeah, families. Yeah. yeah. And it had to do with my, my grandnephew at three yeah. and him at 15. That's right. And having that profiling on. Right. The talk about being black in a world run by Gentile, Gentile Caucasian strangers. Uh -huh. and so all of us in our families have had that talk. Yeah. The Bible also told us we would be profiled. Yeah. And what to do with that knowledge. Go to Exodus, the 22nd chapter. Great. Because you had yeah. some people in their natural mind huh. respond in anger. Yeah. Looking for 40 acres and a mule. <laughs> it's like, look, give up the 40 acres I and know, a mule. Right? Just, just throw that out your mind. Never have. Exodus, the 22nd chapter. Nobody owes you anything but love. That's what the That's Bible it. says. Yes, it is. Y'all right? The Bible told us we were profiled and what to do with that knowledge. Exodus 22 and verse 21. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 22. Hallelujah. And verse 21. Read. Read them. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 21. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him. For ye were strangers in the land of Israel. Right. All right, so here the scripture says, do not vex a stranger. Now, Gentiles profiled us. You're right. But the scripture says, don't vex a stranger. Right, right. Neither oppress him. He might have oppressed you. Right. But the Bible didn't tell you to go back and oppress him. And I think it was with the last year, a couple of years, you have some people that are half a week half awake, some of Israel, uh -huh. and then they want to go into, what was it, a bookstore or something, uh -huh. and shoot up the people that, that uh, call themselves being them. Right. See, that, no. Nope. You, that's wickedness. That's it. The Bible said, don't vex a stranger, a stranger nor oppress him. He right, said, because right. you were strangers in the land of Mitzrayim. So, our forefathers were not in slavery the first time in the United States of America right, right. or in Jamaica or, or anywhere else in the Western so Hemisphere. That, that was the first time that we were in slavery. Right. We were in slavery in Egypt. Right. Our forefathers were. So we're saying think about that. Right. If you don't know about it, go in Exodus, the first chapter, and then you read about what slavery was like in Egypt. And he said, when you were a stranger in, in the land of Egypt, right. he said, but don't vex the stranger or oppress him. So let's look at these four English words. What does it mean? Don't vex. All right. They, they profiled us, uh, but, right. but the Bible says, don't respond with that. That's with, right. With, with, it tells you what to respond. That's all right. right. The four English words, you shall not vex. The four English words, thou shalt neither vex, are one primitive Hebrew root word, yanam, found in Strong's Exalted Concordance of the Old and New Testaments, number 32-38. Strong's defined, thou shalt neither vex to rage or be violent. By implication, uh -huh. it means to suppress, to maltreat, destroy, thrust out by oppressing, oppression, oppressor, proud, 
vex and do violence. All right. So, uh -huh. so you saying, don't vex the stranger. It says, don't rage against and be violent against. Right. Don't maltreat. Don't destroy. Right. Don't look for some store and then you're just gonna go and shoot people They're, because right. that you know. Don't do violence to them. Go to Exodus the twenty third chapter. Hallelujah. Y'all say vengeance is here. Exodus chapter twenty three. Hallelujah. Verse nine. What you do is you you all our families had to talk with us. Right, right. So then we understood how to react. Right. And then when we came to the truth, we understand even clearer how to react. Yeah. But meanwhile, we had enough to survive and navigate through being profiled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And still do. I was talking to somebody, they were telling me how, oh, I know, um, I was talking about this little um, beauty shop, and it's right down the street, um, right before you get to Western and Howard. And I went in there years ago, and they had some 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 Gentile Middle Easterners, you know the whole complexion of that yeah. area has changed. So it's Japhethites over there claiming that they're, they're from the Middle East. And I went in there, and this person just looking at me like I'm gonna steal something. <coughs> it's like, you know what? I'm never coming back in here. Right. And then I was talking to somebody, that's been over 10, 15 years ago. And so they said there's new ownership now. Okay. So there's a, a, a Oriental. Uh, man in there. And so I told him, okay, now I'm going to go back and, and see. But it's like, it's, it's insulting. Like, okay, well, my money's green, but that evidently you don't want it. Right. Praise the mighty God. Exodus 23 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 9. Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger. Yeah. Seeing ye were strangers in the land of yeah. Israel. Yeah. Alright, so he's saying now, you understand your forefathers were in slavery in Egypt, right? And you understand they they were in slavery in the United States or wherever in the Western Hemisphere. If right. you descended from slave, he said, "Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for you know the lay the heart of a stranger, right. seeing you were strangers in the land of Mitzrayim." Right. Right. And we have heard, it's not stories, we've heard the facts right. about our, our forefathers when in, that were in slavery and the things that they went through. Right. And then we've got pictures of right. some white men who were the great, 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 whatever, took their slaves and started having uh, children by them. Right. And it says, so you know the, the, the heart of a stranger. Because you were strange in the land of, of Mitzrayim, and us even more recently, in the Western Hemisphere. Right, right. So, but it, it is a time of Gentile stranger rulership, yeah, and yeah. profiling is what they do. That's yeah. what they do. Yeah. Each, each, each ethnic group has their own little things they do. Yeah. The Gentiles, they are into profiling. And they got used to telling our forefathers what to do. Yeah. And have them blindly follow what they said right. in slavery. Now that is, Rob. So we Matter of fact, if they didn't follow what huh. they said, they would get killed. Yeah. So the United Negro College Fund says a mind is a terrible thing to waste. So let's read their mission statement. That's that's a good expression that they yeah, yeah. have. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. And slavery was all about wasting our minds yeah, and creating up that. A multiplicity of illusions yeah. and people are still walking around in the days in a multiplicity yeah. of illusions now yeah. matter of fact people popping all these babies baby mama mm -hmm. and baby daddy in, in that multiplicity of illusions right. like they're in slavery kind of like is, producing right. like horses and, and, and cows right. and stuff for the master that's what's going on in their mind oh, yeah. just read the mission statement for the United Negro College Fund which says a mind is a terrible thing to waste yes mission statement blackpass.org is dedicated to providing the inquisitive public with comprehensive reliable and accurate information concerning the history of African Americans in the United States and people of African ancestry in other regions of the world it is the aim of the founders and sponsors to foster understanding through knowledge in order to generate constructive change in our society. All right, so they're doing this, saying, okay, 
We got to get the, 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 the descendants of the slaves' mind together. We got yeah, to yeah. focus on their mind. Yeah. Because they've been profiled. So most of us descended from slaves are entrenched in celebrating Gentile stranger days. I know, right? Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes 7 chapter. Ecclesiastes 7 chapter. So this entrenchment even carries over into serving Abba in heaven when we are still more excited about preparing for and prepare longer than usual for. <laughs> go, don't give a second thought to driving further. <laughs> buy new clothes for, and celebrate anything other than coming to the temple, coming to the feast day, and, doing, and in, celebrate bro. the days that Abba told us. Like in, bro. So there you know. will be people that are just overexcited know, right? about going somewhere, and there was a sister that got upset with her brother because he tried to give her some pictures of this uh, beautiful barbecue um, event that um, had, is had, one of them, in, in um, Chicago. Oh, yeah. And she was ditching the temple. And those of us that come to this temple or any temple understand that announcements are made yes. every single week on the Shabbat. Oh, yeah. And she uh, got a bird. Uh, <laughs> In, in her, uh, got a thing in her crawl, and refused the pictures because he didn't tell her about the uh, barbecue. Uh -huh. Well, now if you had been coming to the temple, then you would have heard about the barbecue. Right, right. But there was more excitement about going to that event. Uh -huh than doing what Yahweh said. Right. But, the, but that's just that carryover from being entrenched with celebrating these Gentile stranger days. Right. Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. And we want to read verse 29. Uh, yeah. Ecclesiastes, the uh, seventh yeah. chapter. But she uh, got yeah. out at him. Huh. Acting like it was his obligation <laughs> to keep up. Hey, uh, you don't want to ditch in the temple. Right. And if we don't fill you in and call you up, matter of fact, read my lips. Huh. We said don't call anybody that's not at the temple that's right. to tell them about anything that's happening outside the temple. Hallelujah. Because let them come to the temple and find out. Yes, praise Maria. There's no reason to be making these excess calls. No. Yahweh is priority. Yahweh is number that's one. It. So love you, but. And making no excess calls nope. to tell you about tell it, no extracurricular so activities. Right. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 29. Read. Praise on. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 29. Lo, this only have I found, that Elohim hath made man upright, uh -huh. but they have sought out many inventions. Yep. So here, here's a... a, yeah. a, a I'll be in heaven. He's letting right. you know now uh, through this man Yahweh. Lo, yeah. this only have I found that Elohim had made Adam to man. Yeah. So he put the right thing in it. Yeah, yeah. But being up under the, the, these Gentile pagan ways, he says he made him upright. Uh -huh. But they have sought out many inventions. All right. Tell I live, many huh? alternatives. Yeah. So let's see what what is this this invention. So 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 there's another scripture where it says there was good seed that was planted in the field. Uh -huh. Then all of a sudden here comes some weeds coming in the field. Uh -huh. And then the question was that well, where did the weeds come from? Uh -huh. You only planted good seed. And the answer was our enemy sold them. Right. So we live in a world where it's the enemy against Abba in heaven. Yeah 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 yeah. And if you, with Abba in heaven, it's the enemy against you. Yes. He said, hey, I, I made man upright. Right, right. But they sought out many inventions. Yep. So what is this English word invention? What is it talking about? This, he started out right, but right. something happened. All right. The English word inventions is the Hebrew word kishobon, 
found at Strong's Exalted Concordance of the Old and New Testament, 2810. Strong defines inventions as from Hebrews 2803, meaning a contrivance to bring about or create something, a composition which gives a sense of artificial cavity, for example, actual a warlike machine or mental machination engine and invention. All right, so this invention, it says somebody that composes something that gives a sense of artificiality. Right, right, right. You know, they got ingre labels yeah. on food. Yeah. Uh, artificial ingredient. Yeah. Or natural ingredient. Right. So this, whatever they, they, they invent. Right. It, it has a sense of artificiality. Yes, it it's fake. Yeah. It says it's a mental machination. It's yeah. something they they made up in yeah. their mind. Oh yeah. So so most of us descended from slaves are entrenched in these inventions, these mental yeah. Yeah. gentile days, stranger days that that have been put in their mind. Yeah. And this entrenched mindset is is a holdover when we come to the temple. It's a holdover from the Gentiles right. dictating to us what to do. Yep. Go to Jude, the first chapter. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Great. that's why Great. some people are more excited about going to the barbecue yeah. than they are about. Right. Uh, coming to the temple to celebrate Yahweh's uh, weekly holy day know, right? or yearly holy day. Praise the mighty Yah. So thinking independently, going to Jude, the first chapter, yep, yep. can be an odd occurrence to Gentile strangers and to us when we've been used to being told what to do. Uh huh. When they told us to celebrate January 1st as a new year, uh -huh. to lift up our liquor glasses <laughs> and yell Happy New Year and kiss at 12 a.m., they expected us to do it. Yeah. And we, with a wasted mind, mindlessly did it. Yeah. <laughs> Jude, the first chapter. We want to read verses 12 to 13. Uh, yeah. Jude, the first chapter. So they told us to do it. And we did it. Yeah. Jude 1. Oh, we just, just, let's just read just 12. Just 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Jude chapter 1 and verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity. Uh -huh. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Uh -huh. Clouds, they are without water. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth. Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Uh -huh. All right, so you talking about your feast? Right. You're not talking about his. Right. You talking about these these stranger uh, Gentile days that most of the people that descended from slaves are uh -huh. entrenched in. Yep. Yeah. He that said right there's, here, there's spots in your feast of charity. Yeah, this right. stuff that you made up, January first. Yeah, it says, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without reverence. Right. Why? Right, because uh, the Creator is, is nowhere in it. Right. Abba in heaven is not a part of that. Clouds they are without mind, carried about a wind. So whatever new, th I don't know how many um, Gentile, Caucasian, stranger holidays there are now. They add more to them each and every year. Right. And I mean, it's, it's a bunch of them. It says, carried about a wind. So every wind, they, whatever they think, okay, let's make a women's day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's make a, yeah. a this day. Let's yeah. make a that day. And then they do it. Yeah. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice mop it, twice dead, plucked know, up right? by the roots. Just the chaff that the wind blows away. Why? Because it's nothing. It's right. just it's all these multiplicity yeah. of illusions. Right. So they told us to give candy and flowers on February 14th for Valentine's Day, to barbecue on Memorial Day, to barbecue and watch the firecrackers on July 4th, to barbecue on Labor Day, yeah. to dress up and ask for a trick or treats on Halloween, 
to cook turkey and dressing on Thanksgiving, uh -huh. to buy presents and put up Christmas trees and lights on December 25th. Uh -huh. They expected us to do it, and we, with a wasted mind, uh -huh. mindlessly did it. Yep. Go to Amos the 8th chapter. So we're now being told to add Juneteenth I know, right? to the Gentile Stranger celebration list. Right, right. And it's a long list. The merchants are oh, yeah. rich off of yep. uh, 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 descendants of slaves yep. entrenched in this stuff. Yep. Trying to celebrate. There are some people, as soon as December 25th is over, they go back and buy up what's ever left <laughs> yeah. and save them because the they're looking, waiting until it comes again yep. the next year. A whole year they're buying stuff I ahead. Know, right? But who's doing that for the days that Yahweh set up? Huh. Amos, the 8th chapter. Your faithful. And I'm going to read verse 10. Amos. Hallelujah. Chapter 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise up. Amos chapter 8, and let's read verse 10, please. Hallelujah. Amos chapter 8. And verse 10. And I will turn your feast into mourning uh -huh. and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the mourning of an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day. Uh -huh. So here, here is the uh, Abba in heaven said. He's coming down on this these Gentile stranger days that descendants of slaves are entrenched in. Yep. And now, after we've come here, we're not supposed to be entrenched in them. And we're not supposed to be having what he said to do last on our list. No, right. And be all is, excited right. about doing all this extraneous stuff. Right. And then catch an attitude like the sister did because the brother right. didn't wire her up on this, this extracurricular hmm. stuff. Say it like the day he told you Here is, I was saying, I'm going to turn your feast into mourning. He does. I'm going to turn them into funerals. He That's does. what he's saying. He does. And all your songs in lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the mourning for as a, as of an only bonner son. And the end thereof as a bitter he, day. He does it. So it won't be all this. He does it. Partying and all that, and and and, and happy. He said he gonna make it as a bitter day. He does on them Go to holidays. Psalms the thirty seven chapter. He does. So he the did. latest stranger holiday called Juneteenth seemed to pop up all of a sudden to me. Yep. Psalm thirty seven. I heard it mentioned on the TV show Blackish in twenty twenty. This year, twenty twenty two, the biography cable TV station said this holiday has been celebrated by us, descendants of slaves, for decades. Huh. And I said to myself when I heard it, I smell a rat. Huh. I smell a big rat. How you gonna tell me? <laughs> I've been celebrating this for decades. <laughs> and I'm just hearing about it. I know, right? In 2020. Like two years. So, I smell a rat. So let's read what what does history.com say about this this Juneteenth? Juneteenth, short for June 19th, marks the day when federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas in 1865 to take control of the state and ensure that all enslaved people be free. The troops' arrival came of full two and a half years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Juneteenth honors the end to slavery in the United States and is considered the longest running African American holiday. On June 17, 2021, it officially became a federal holiday. Confederate General Robert E. Lee has surrendered at a Comtax courthouse two months earlier in Virginia, but slavery had remained relatively 
unaffected in Texas until U.S. General Gordon Granger stood on Texas soil and read General Orders Number no. 3, the people of Texas are informed that in, uh, in or, accordance with a proclamation from the Executive of the United States, all slaves are free. All right, so, so then uh, uh, History.com says uh, Juneteenth honors the end of slavery in the United States and is considered the longest running African American mm -hmm. holiday. Mm -hmm. By who? Mm -hmm. I smell a rat. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, these are my peeps. By who? Mm -hmm. Is it considered the longest running African American holiday? So the biography cable TV station show biographies of Malcolm X, Jackie Robinson, and, and a few other uh, descendants of slaves. So this is a so-called longest running holiday for us. Sound to me like a uh, Gentile Caucasian stranger society trying to tell us what to do once again. Mm -hmm. Psalms 37, let's read verse 14. Oh, yeah. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 14. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bows to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright, of upright conversation. Uh -huh. All right, so it says, Harasha have drawn out the sword. Uh -huh. And now you know a sword is symbolic of words that people say. All right. Have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of tamim know, lifestyle right? of conversation. Know, right? To try to get you to say, oh, you know, well, well, I'm I'm a descendant, you right. know, uh, of a, a slave. So this is this is one of them. Okay, I don't do all the rest of them. This right. is one that I should definitely. Right. We'll find it in here. Right. Find so, it from Genesis. Tell it like it is, bro, so we can know. See, the wicked have drawn out the sword. Yep, yep. The wicked are one saying this word. Yep. Talking about considered to be the the longest standing, and then uh, none of us have heard about it. <laughs> Who, who were all up involved with, with slavery. They bent their bow to cast down the poor needed to slay such as be of an upright conversation and get, getting right in tune with, with Abba in heaven. Right, right. And listen to what he's telling us to do and what he's telling us to say. Right. So go to Deuteronomy 28. So we descendants of slaves say about Juneteenth, huh. June what? <laughs> We are no longer on the plantation. We do not allow random strangers to speak into our lives. Deuteronomy 28. Hallelujah. Only Abba in heaven does that. All right. Juneteenth is another stranger invention to keep us wasting our minds yeah, yeah. or doing things without thinking about what I we're know, doing right. and why. I know, right? So like it is, Rob. So like it is, I told you to. People, the people talking about uh, coming over on Plymouth Rock or something. <laughs> you know what do you say? Plymouth Rock fell on us and like, <laughs> and out there with firecrackers talking about <laughs> freedom for for your I'm country. Not right. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28 and let's read verses 65 to 67. Hallelujah. Praise Deuteronomy on. chapter 28 and verse 65. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, no. neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But Yahweh shall give thee there a trembling heart, huh. and failing of the of eyes, and sorrow of mind. Yeah. Verse 66, And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. Huh. Verse 67, in the morning thou shalt say, Would Elohim if if it were even? And at evening thou shalt say, Would Elohim it were morning? For the fear of thy heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thy eyes which thou shalt see. So so slavery was a, a yeah. traumatic experience yeah. for our forefathers. Yeah. 
And, and it says, among these nations, you find no ease. Well, that's why most of, uh, that's why we got entrenched right. in, in whatever the master said to do. And then the only day that they would give our forefathers off was the first day of the week. Right. That pagan day, Sunday. And so that's why they're still in Trish. Kind of like it is, bro. But it, it, here and here, Yahweh just d describing the, 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 the Abba in heaven just describing. Hey, our forefathers like hung in doubt before them. Yeah. Let them look a wrong, a wrong way or look and they had to walk with their eyes cast down right. and all kind of don't even so, so and, and they were just in, in constant fear day and night yeah. and had no assurance of their life because nope. the, the stranger could just kill them at the drop of a hat. Right. In the morning, he said, our forefathers said, I wish it was evening. Uh -huh. And at, at night, I wish it was morning. Right. He said, for the fear of their, their, their mind, they would fear for the sight of their eyes that they would see. Uh -huh. Let's go to uh, Galatians, the third chapter. So the Bible tells us random strangers speaking to our forefathers' lives is what led them into slavery. And then once they got in, it was like obey or get killed. Right. Galatians, the third chapter. Praise the mighty God for his revelation. Now, Luke. Galatians 3, we're going to read verse uh, 28. I'll do that. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. Greeks. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. There is neither Hebrew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Mashiach. Yeah. Now, the people that are yeah. trying to quote in this verse... And it says, there's neither uh, Yadim nor Goi. So the, there's no Caucasian, there's no Shemai, there's no, you know, Hamite. There's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female. For you are all a kind of Mashiach Yashua. Well, we're all the same in one way, yeah. but not in all ways. Right. So coming to salvation did not change us descendants of slaves' backgrounds. Nope. Most of us are still living in the Western European countries where our ancestors were slaves. Yeah, yeah. And there's some unconscious ways of relating to us that are still there. Yeah. That's what the, the talk in all of our families was about. Right. And so I'll go to Isaiah 14 and, I, and I'm going to, um, I'll read this. Great. Mighty God. So, so, so Living in the Western European countries where our ancestors were slaves, it says, okay, we're all one in Mashiach Yeshua, but at the same time, yes and no. Right. Slaves can't change the color of their skin. Slaves were bred like animals for profit. Right. In Isaiah 14. Slaves come from a background of being dehumanized and labeled as property. Yeah, yeah. Slaves were worked on plantations like animals, sometimes even to death. Yeah. Slaves unable to work were killed. Slaves were assigned an overseer who woke them up, made sure they worked constantly, punished, whipped, and sold them without cause or for any so-called infraction. Right. Slaves were not certain who their fathers were. Slave masters kept slaves ignorant, and laws were made not to educate them. Right. It meant something to the master that his slave was happy with the master. Huh. And here how it's even further yeah. creating those illusions, illusions in the mind. The master used the fear of being sold to keep the slave under control. Right. Slaves could be asked by any white person, even children, right. how does your master treat you? Slaves were sent as spies to ask other slaves, how does your master treat you? If the slave did not say he is treated well, he would be separated from, from his family right. and sold immediately. Bystanders knew slaves were mistreated and did nothing about it for centuries. Right. So that's that underlying and again, Yahweh showed us how to deal with it. He said, don't oppress the, right. hey, Gentile profile. This is what they do. 
Isaiah 14. So, so descendants of slaves in the stranger inhabited Western European countries will always be different. Oh, you yeah. can see us coming. <laughs> we, with full presence of mind, now celebrate Abba in heaven's days yes. that he told us to. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah. Praise God. And we want to read verses 1 to 4. So, so now we don't do things in a mindless way no more. Uh -uh. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For Yahweh will have mercy on Yaakov, and will yet choose Yisrael, and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Yahweh. Yes. Verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of, of Yahweh, for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that Yahweh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Verse 4, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, how hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. This, this is where we are now. Hallelujah. Our forefathers went through our whole bunch of said that yeah. hard bondage. Yeah. And this is using this king of Babylon, so whatever place we were in bondage, right, right. the most recent bondage was the, the transatlantic slave trade. It says, it'll come to pass in that day that Yahweh has given us rest from our sorrow uh -huh. and from the fear, from the hard bondage wherein our forefathers were made to serve. Yeah, yeah. So we with full presence of mind now celebrate Abba in heaven's days. Yeah. Psalms 60th chapter. Yeah. We descendants of slaves know Abba in heaven has released us yeah. from slavery in all its forms. Uh, Not yeah. just the physical, right. but the mental and the spiritual. Psalms 60th chapter. Hallelujah. Uh, we don't do things in a mindless way uh -uh. anymore. Anyway, uh -uh. anymore. We don't do things because the majority says right. we're supposed to do it. Yeah, like it is, bro.